Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. We have x squared plus x plus 1 squared equals 3 times x to the 4th plus x squared plus 1. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting three methods and let's start with the first one. So first method is called brute force. We're going to go ahead and expand everything. When we do, we get x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1 plus 2x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x. And on the right hand side, we're going to get 3x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 3. Now let's go ahead and put everything on the right hand side where x to the fourth is positive. That gives us 2x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 2x plus 3 equals 0. Notice that this plus this is 3x squared, they cancel out. Okay? Great, so we got a quartic equation. It's not a depressed quartic. We, are st uh, we still have x cubed, and good luck solving this, right? The quartic formula is pretty complicated. So, can we make this quartic at least monic? So, monic means the coefficient, the leading coefficient is 1. So, we want to turn this number into 1 so that it's a little easier to apply the rational root theorem. Yeah, and, and yes, we can do it. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 8. So, 8 times this, let me just write the result. 8 times this is going to give me 16x to the fourth minus 16x cubed minus 16x plus 24 equals 0. And then think about 16x to the fourth. We can write it as 2x quantity to the fourth power. And this could be written as 2x to the third, but that will be 8x cubed. So we do need a 2 there. Minus, we can also multiply 2x by 8. And finally, plus 24. And hopefully you got the idea. I'm going to name 2x something else like, I don't know, y, maybe this time. You could also use t if you want. So let's go ahead and call this y. And then we'll, we'll get y to the fourth minus 2y cubed minus 8y plus 24 is equal to 0. Now here's how the rational root theorem works. If there are any rational roots, then they should be divisors of this number or factors of 24. And there's quite a few numbers that will work. Plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 4, plus minus 6, plus minus 8, plus minus 12 and plus minus 24. Quite a few factors. There's basically 16 factors that you have to test. I don't see one or negative one right away. You kind of need to test it out. And that's definitely going to take a while. And at the end, you may get nothing. Okay. Anyways, let's go ahead and leave it at that. You can check it out if you want. Uh, but I'll continue with the second method. Because we got to finish three methods, okay? So the second method basically uses factoring. And you'll probably remember, uh, we recently did a video on this. If I can find the link, I'll share this here and down below. So there was a problem that used this same idea. Anyways, hopefully you'll remember. x to the 4th plus x squared plus 1 can be written as x to the 4th plus 2x squared plus 1 minus x squared. So we can basically break down the x squared into this. And then this becomes a difference of two squares, which is nice, right? So kind of right, like the exaggeration. We don't need parentheses, but I just want to show you, yay, this looks like a difference of two squares. And then we can factor it x squared plus 1 minus x, x squared plus 1 plus x. But let's write it as x squared plus x plus 1 in standard form and x squared minus x plus 1. So those are the factors of this quartic, which is not kind of expected, right? You don't really see that right away unless you dealt with these kinds of things. But now I got this. I have the x to the fourth on the left-hand side, which is this, right? And that equals 3 times, actually, that's not right. This 3, okay, I had the other one on the left-hand side, so never mind. I had the perfect square on the left, right? Let me check, double check. Okay, here we go. So we have x squared plus x plus 1 squared on the left. And on the right, I have 3 times this. Because I factored the quartic, right? 
Awesome. Now, we can go ahead and divide both sides by x squared plus x plus 1. But can't that be 0? Yes, it can, but I'll tell you how. First of all, assume that this can't be 0 and you can cross it out. What happens if this equals 0? We'll talk about that separately, okay? So, what do we get? We get a quadratic, right? Which is nice. From a quartic, we go to a quadratic, which is super duper nice. Distribute to 3. Again, put everything on the same side. Pick the positive side. 2x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0, right? All right, so this is kind of interesting, right? Because this should look familiar to you. And, I mean, doesn't it look familiar to you? It should, if it didn't. Because we can factor out a 2, and from here we get x minus 1 squared. And is that awesome? Yes, it is, I think. So from here we get x minus 1 squared, which gives us x equals 1 as the only real solution. I say real because the other piece is going to give us a non-real solution. We'll take a look at it next. Okay? But basically x equals 1 gives us something super duper nice. Okay. Awesome. So what are we going to do next? Okay. I see now what happened. We made a mistake. Let me go ahead and fix it real quick. That's why we didn't get that solution here. I just realized it's 3 minus 1. So that's going to be a plus 2 there. So this is going to be a plus 2. And obviously, uh, you can clearly see that this is going to be uh, easily factorable, I think, right? We should be able to factor it real quick. Also, forget about this nonsense. I know it's nonsense, but anyways, I stand corrected. So now we're going to go ahead and fix it. So let's go ahead and take out 2x cubed. That's going to give me x minus 1 minus 2x minus 1. That's the cool thing about... Um, checking the second method because that kind of checks our first method. Anyways, if you factor out a x minus 2 with a, x minus 1 with a 2, then you end up with x cubed minus 1, and then obviously that's going to give us another x minus 1, so we're going to square it, and then the other factor, as you know, has no real solutions, so the same thing that we found. Make sense? Okay, so we have a rational solution, x equals 1 is the one. Okay, great. So that's verified here, so we got three solutions with repetitions. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the third method real quick, and then we'll finish up with that. So the third method basically depends on a really cool idea. Because we kind of get to, you know, do something special. Let's divide both sides by x squared first. And you'll see in a little bit why I'm doing it. Divide by x squared and divide by x squared. And when you do the division, you're going to notice this x can go underneath that. So we can use a common exponent like this. And then here I can basically just divide everything by x squared. So that's going to give me x squared plus 1 plus 1 over x squared. And then this can also be divided inside, x plus 1 plus 1 over x squared. And guess what? We're going to use substitution. And yes, we're going to call this something, like let's call this plus this t. We get t plus 1 squared equals 3 times. By the way, if t is equal to x plus 1 over x, this is going to be t squared minus 2 plus 1. That's the same thing as t squared minus 1. And from here, we're going to get pretty much the same solutions. All right, and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.